Welcome to episode 32 of Live It Out with the Planning Woman. I'm your host, Jennifer Booth, founder of The Planning Woman and creator of The Planning Woman's 30-day scripture journals, as well as the new Live It Out Planner pages. I'm also a time management consultant and a certified life purpose coach. I'm so glad you could join me today for this episode. It is my hope that you will be encouraged by what you hear to be able to live a life of real purpose with a real plan that helps you to experience real peace. What comes to mind when you think of the word courage? Do you think of strong people climbing a mountain? Maybe you think of people who have fought long battles with their health and have stared death in the face and won. Or perhaps, like me, you picture the battle between David and Goliath in the Bible. I think we often associate courage with a lack of fear. In fact, Dictionary.com says courage is the quality of mind or spirit that enables a person to face difficulty, danger, pain, etc. without fear. And it also means bravery. But I really think it's something different. Courage does not mean the absence of fear. Courage is feeling fearful but acting anyway. I mean, who am I to disagree with the dictionary? But I really believe when I look at my own experiences and um, see the actions of others that I see that I feel are courageous, they would probably tell you that, yes, they might have had courage, but they still had fear, but they chose to act anyway. And I also kind of disagree with the dictionary definition that says courage is the same thing as bravery. I think people who are brave are usually prone to seek out adventure or are willing to put their lives on the line for others without thinking. Oh, I know we all can experience moments of bravery, but I just think God has gifted certain individuals with more bravery than others. Today, I want us to talk about how we can live courageous lives. You may be asking, though, why would I want to live a courageous life? especially given the condition of the world we live in today. After all, wouldn't it be much easier to live under the radar and adopt a lifestyle that doesn't offend anyone or cause controversy? Well, yes, it would be easier if we lived a quiet life that didn't rock the boat. However, I firmly believe that as a believer, God has called us to live courageous lives. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I don't think that means we need to do that without fear, but I think it does mean we look to God and rely on Him for the strength we need to live courageously. I'm going to be honest here. When I thought about this topic of living courageously, I really was coming from the viewpoint that we often don't live courageously because of our lack of self-confidence or our low opinions of ourselves. And I do think that is one reason we don't adopt a courageous lifestyle. However, as I have been listening to the news and reading articles about current events, I've become more and more convinced that as believers, we need to quit taking a back seat to things that are going on in the world. If we hide away, I'm afraid we will wake up one day and realize that our freedom to be a believer has been taken away. In order for this world to come to accept Jesus as its personal Lord and Savior, we have to live courageously and share the good news. We can't just keep it to ourselves. We can be world changers, but it's going to take courageous living to change the world. I have thought for many years, as I've watched the direction our world has taken, that the church has abandoned its responsibilities. And by the church, I mean the body of believers as a whole, not necessarily a specific denomination. We have let the government, especially in the United States, take over the roles of helping others that were originally assigned to the church. Yes, we have lots of great ministries helping the widows, orphans, homeless, and needy, but overall, each individual church member is not necessarily involved in helping others on a regular basis. I know I'm not. It's not um, a regular part of my life. Yes, I like to participate in ministries that take care of people who are in need, but it's not a regular part of my life. And I know that's not right. That's not 
how God has called us to live. We've let the cares of this world keep us from seeing the needs around us, and we've let political correctness force us into hiding because we're afraid of what people will say if we show what we truly believe. I think God is giving us a wake-up call so that we can rejoin Him in the work we were originally intended to do as believers. I strongly believe that each, if each one of us would find one person or family we could invest our time and resources in, we could make this world a better place and be able to expand God's kingdom. To do so, though, requires that we live a courageous life. We can't help others without courage, because if we open ourselves to God's leading, He's probably going to ask us to go places we don't want to go and do things we cannot do on our own. So how do we live a courageous life? I've come up with three things that I think would help us to get started on living a courageous life. These are not... um, excuse me, everything that we should be doing to live a courageous life, but I think they're a good place to start. So first, we have to rely on God. Any strength or courage we have comes from the Lord. This takes daily time with Him, filling up our hearts and minds with His Word, and communicating with Him so we can hear what He wants us to do. I have mentioned on other episodes how I create a scripture writing plan for each month of the year. The one for March of 2019 is focused on courageous living. I will put a link in the show notes so you can get your own copy of the scripture writing plan if you want to join us in March. I think to focus on the promises of God and the stories of how he used imperfect and fearful people to do his work can help encourage us when we feel called to do something but lack the courage to follow through. So to Um, start a good foundation of living a courageous life, we need to rely on God to supply the courage we need to navigate this life. A second thing that we can do to live a courageous life is to realize we are not all called to do the same things. God has gifted us all in different ways. So to compare ourselves to others and what they can do only makes us feel bad. It also makes us overlook the ways God has gifted us. Some people are gifted in ways that make them more visible to the world, while others are gifted in ways that will never be seen by the outside world. Their work is done primarily behind the scenes with little to no recognition. All of our gifts are important to the kingdom work, though, no matter how big or small they may seem. So don't discount what you have to offer or are gifted in because you think it's such a small thing. Let me share a passage from scripture that backs this up. I'm going to read 1 Corinthians 12, 12 through 27. <clears throat> Excuse me. It says, Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, We were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, Those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, and the parts that we think are less honorable we treat with special honor, and the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty, while our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, 
but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. So when you are thinking about the things you are gifted with and called to do, um, don't worry about doing those things. I mean, take courage, ask God to help you fulfill those callings and those giftings, and don't compare yourself to someone else. Um, Sometimes that's what makes us lack the courage to do the things we're gifted in because we look at someone else and we seem... um, to think that what they're doing is so much better than what we could do and it's so much more noble and more important when everything that God has appointed us to do is important. And if we don't do our part, then we're not going to complete the mission of the church and the mission of God and expand his kingdom. So I, I would encourage you to just embrace your calling, embrace your giftings, and realize that we're not all called to do the same things and be grateful for what God has given you and the abilities he's given you to do the things he's called you to do. Okay, a third thing that we can do as we are trying to live courageously is to recognize that ordinary acts can be courageous. We often think for someone to be courageous, they have to do something big But that's not always the case. Think about it with me for a moment. If you're an introvert like me, the smallest acts can take great courage to do them. Things like welcoming a new person at church, inviting a neighbor into your home to get to know them, and speaking up in a group all have caused me to quake in fear at times. It all, all these things took courage um, to be able to do them. And while these acts may seem ordinary, They all have the potential of expanding God's kingdom. You see, as I spoke to the new person at church, got to know my neighbor, and spoke up in a group, I was creating opportunities to share the gospel and how it impacted my life. So if you find yourself feeling less than courageous in doing small things, know that you are not alone. And remember that small acts can lead to big results and that we do need to rely on God to give us the courage to follow through. Okay, so now that we've talked about a few ways we can practically live more courageously, let's see what courageous living might look like in our everyday lives. And here are a few examples. Saying yes to a new opportunity God is leading you to. Saying no to an opportunity that sounds exciting, but you know does not fit in with where God has you in life right now. Speaking up for the marginalized, feeding the homeless in your town, striking up a conversation with the cashier at the grocery store, choosing to not watch the latest TV show or movie everyone is raving about because you know it doesn't reflect God's values, unfollowing people on social media who make you feel less than God created you to be, and sharing your thoughts on social issues when they go against the mainstream. There are many, many ways we can live courageously for God, and it won't be easy, but I think with the right attitude and motivation, we can step up and courageously expand God's kingdom. I'm in. Will you join me? There is so much more we could talk about when it comes to living courageously, but I hope I've at least sparked some thought that will have you turning to God's word to see how he wants you to live. I would love to hear your thoughts on courageous living, about how you live courageously, how you want to live courageously, how you think God is calling us to live courageously. I think this is all up for a great discussion um, based on the Bible, of course. I think we all have our own opinions about things, but I think when we dig into the Bible together into God's word and see what he says, I think that we could all come to some consensus of what it means to live courageously for him. So I would love to connect with you. And, um, you know, as always, you can connect with me via email at theplanningwoman at gmail.com. 
or you can catch up with me on social media and find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash the planning woman and on Instagram at instagram.com slash the planning woman. And don't forget to check out the link that I'm going to put um, in the show notes here so that you can go get your own free copy of the Courageous Living Scripture Writing Plan for March. Um, That will start on this Friday, so I hope you will join us and um, at least look up the scriptures, even if you're not wanting to write them. Maybe use this as your devotional for the month and look them up and meditate on them. Um, I think that you will find a lot of great value in reading these verses on Courageous Living. So until next time, I hope you have a great week. Thanks so much for stopping by.